Hello, my name is Samantha. Welcome to my June reading blog. So I'm going to go read outside in a minute. Um, I'm not outside right now because my neighbors are also outside eating what looks like nachos with Doritos as the chips. So that, I mean, I think that would work. I think that would work. Um, so I'll be out there in a minute. I am starting out the month with a book I am 70% of the way through. I don't know. Um, I am on page 228, Dead and Gondola by Anne Clare. This is actually nice to be reading in the heat of summer. It's set in November in Colorado in like a ski resort town. Um, the two main characters are sisters. They own the local bookshop. There is a death. They are going to solve it. So classic cozy mystery setup. I am really enjoying it. And hopefully reading it will cool me off because it's, it's honestly, it's not so hot outside, but my apartment in the summer months is so hot. And yes, I have air conditioning, but I honestly don't like to have it on that much. So I usually just have like a small fan pointing at me. It's on right now. It's not even facing me right now. I made a mistake, but I wanted to do another reading vlog. I made one in April. I'm making one now in June. I'm thinking if I like this pattern, I'll do like every other month with the reading vlog. So, and so I did, mostly I work from home. I worked an extra hour today, which I don't like doing, but, um, and I have some more editing to do tonight. Um, I want to finish one of my Gotham Knights videos, but I wanted to just relax after work, read a book outside. My balcony garden is getting a pretty good start. We're like three weeks in. It's looking pretty good. So I, I'll show you that progress. Of, so I'll show you that throughout the vlog as well. You get to see some, I've got veggies, I've got herbs, I've got flowers. The herbs are kind of taking their time, but the flowers are doing pretty well. Um, yeah, but for right now, reading outside, Dead in Gondola by Anne Claire. It is the next day, June 2nd, and today I have started to read The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. Now, I'm only three chapters in at this point, but I'm not sure it's the genre for me. So I'll explain, I'll give, I'll give the setup. I'll explain what's happened so far. I'll also say, so because, so I'll talk about the beginning of this book and I'll talk about like things in the other books as they happen, but I won't give away the ending for anything. I won't give away any big spoilers throughout the books I read. So I'll talk about them generally as I can, but for this one, I am going to talk about details of what happens in the first three chapters because that's the setup for the book. So I don't feel like I'm spoiling anything. So as this book starts, and I will say trigger warning for suicide attempt, this is the timestamp when I stop talking about it if you need to skip ahead. So the main couple in this book, they have somewhat recently bought a new house. It is, they live in Australia. It is on a cliffside, like next to the ocean. And as it turns out, this is a popular location for people to come to the cliffside and so since they have lived there there have been seven people who have come up to the cliff and luckily the husband has like noticed gone outside talked them out of it they stepped them you know away from the cliff gotten them some help and like seven out of seven times he's been able to convince them please do not do this like in my front yard or whatever it is um, and so at this point it's become like, unfortunately, kind of a routine, like, you know, they'll call the police, he'll go outside, he'll talk to them. And then, you know, as the, you know, emergency and or medical services are arriving, he will then hopefully have like talked them back. So in the opening of this book, um, it's now happened again. And there's, so there's a woman that they notice outside. So like she... The wife calls the police and he goes out to talk to her. 
and I don't think they're out there very long, but she's kind of like keeping an eye like through the window on this situation. And she notices, like she looks out once and notices that like he is standing too close to the edge of the cliff, but then gets distracted with something because they have two little kids. So I don't, I don't remember if it's like a question or help me with this or whatever it is, but she looks away for however long, looks back and the woman is gone, like over the edge gone like she doesn't see it happen but what she does see is her husband standing at the edge like this and it's like you could take that like oh he was trying to like grab her you know pull her back and I'm like okay I like are they setting it up to ask like did he push her I, I guess that's like the question of the like is he like but why why so then you know shortly after the police arrive the officer like goes in with them asks you know what happened like are you ready if you're ready to talk what happened and then the officer turns to her and he's like did you see anything he's like knowing that she was inside but like if she saw anything through the window and she chooses not to mention how she saw her husband standing on the cliff Cause she, cause that's like, you know, you're not completely sure. And if there's no reason to think that there was anything nefarious happening, she chooses not to say. She then is like making her way upstairs and is like, I lied to the police. And it's like, how serious are we taking this? Like, is it possible that he did this? And then you remember, oh, you know, a little bit earlier in the book, she like mentions offhand that she once took like, I mean, they don't say Buzzfeed, but like took a Buzzfeed quiz once, like is your partner a psychopath or something like that. And it's like, oh, well, why did you take that quiz? You know, that could mean nothing or could be like, did you have a reason to ask that question? So basically this is all being set up as like a domestic thriller of like, can you trust your husband? Is he dangerous? Is he I guess murdering people like what what is going on here and honestly thrillers in general are a hit or miss for me I generally don't like domestic thrillers which it seems that this is so I'm gonna I'm gonna still I'm gonna still listen to the audiobook I'm gonna give it a go I don't know I'm not sure if there's because I'm only three chapters in, which is not very much at all, there may be more to this story that would kind of override me generally not liking domestic thrillers. I don't know yet. I am done with work, did another hour of overtime, but so I'm now 44% into the audiobook of The Soulmate by, by Sally Hepworth. Yeah, development. Okay, so there is there is an element of this that I was not expecting that I'm not, I'm may have not seen before in a book. So not only is it dual perspective, but it is also dual timeline. So one of the perspectives is the wife. Her dual timelines are labeled as uh, then and now. Now being current times, then being the beginning of her relationship with her husband. But the second perspective is the dead woman and her dual timelines are before and after as in before and after her death so in the after parts she's basically a ghost narrator i don't think i've seen anyone do that i've seen people you know i've seen like dual perspective where it's main character murderer but not main character murder victim so that is an interesting, that's an interesting thing. And that's revealed like start of chapter four. So like it's part, it's, it's not, I don't consider it a spoiler. So I'm talking about it. And it's an interesting thing to note if you are interested in the book. So to know going in, it's not like it's a surprise. It's just part of the book. Um, and then her, so then her after being after she's dead before being the beginning is of the relationship with her husband. Um, now, obviously paths kind of intertwine here so I won't go into specifics on that because that would be spoilers but so at this point 
I do kind of feel like I'm not super interested in any of them, but overall, I'm not disliking it. <laughs> so we'll see where it goes. It is June 3rd, almost 9 p.m., and I just finished Dead and Gondola by Anne Clare. As a reminder, this is the cozy mystery set in a small Colorado ski resort town. The two main characters own a bookshop and they are the ones who are going to solve this murder. So I will say that the reveal in this one, so it set up a very classic like mystery reveal gathering of the characters all together to kind of reveal who the killer is. But so they, the, the sisters who own the bookshop, they come up with this plan of how to bring everyone together, but they sort of are going into it not being 100% sure who it is. Like, I think they have their suspicions that they're going to try and like, try and get the person to confess basically, I guess. But in the process of doing that, they realize who it is and it is a shocker. I was not expecting it. Like I had, I had my suspicions that lined up with their suspicions and this, oh my goodness. So obviously not going to say who it is, but I really enjoyed this one. I really enjoyed this one. Book two in the series is coming out this fall. So I'm looking forward to that. I definitely want to read that. I really liked all of the characters. Like if they have a great little family going, cause it's the two sisters, their grandmother, and then one of the sisters has a daughter and they just, they were all delightful. So I'm, I'm looking forward to book two later this year. It is June 4th. I've been out running some errands this morning and now I'm at the library. I'm going to return Dead in Gondola and then pick out some new ones. Mm -hmm. great time. I am so excited to show you what I picked out. So I wanted to get a graphic novel and I chose Mooncakes. It is by Wendy Yu and Suzanne Walker. Young adult queer paranormal romance. It says it's sweet and magical and I've, I've heard of this before. I'd heard of it a little while ago so I'm excited to be reading it now. Next so this is the one that I knew I was going to get. This is Lavender House by Lev A.C. Rosen. Sorry for the glare. Um, so this one is set in, um, is it San Francisco? Yes, San Francisco, 1952. This one is, um, I guess, a queer mystery. So in this one, the there's sort of, I guess it's like a boarding house um, and all of the residents are queer. So they all know about each other. They all keep each other's secret. And the two women who own the house, one of them passes away. But the other one feels like there's maybe something suspicious going on. She wants to look into it. So she hires a private investigator who himself was a former detective recently fired because he is gay. So he starts to look into this situation and it turns out the people of Lavender House might have a couple more secrets. I don't know if any of them were involved. I guess we will find out. And then the third one I got, this one I got just by browsing. So I went alphabetically, I got up to C. This is My Lady's Choosing. It is a choose your own adventure historical romance. I am so excited. This one is by Kitty Caron and Larissa Zagris. I will look up how to say all of these names. I'm sure I've said some wrong and I do apologize for that, but I will look them up to make sure. So, I mean, choose your own adventure historical romance. I was like, this is the one. So I chose this one. And I, I, the problem now, as I'm sure you can see, is that I don't know which of these to read first. It's a problem. And I, I don't know how I'm, how I'm gonna solve it. Oh my god, I don't know. It is June 6th, and this morning I finished The Soulmate by Sally Hepworth. As expected, 
I didn't like it. So I gave it one star, which doesn't mean it was a bad book. It means it was not the book for me. This was a domestic thriller. I don't like domestic thrillers and I knew that. So I probably should have followed that instinct, but I kept reading it. I finished it. Didn't like it. It was even more domestic than I thought at the beginning. And that's just not, that's not what I look for as a reader. I'm not, and I mean, domestic thrillers are very popular. I think if you like domestic thrillers, you might really like this one, but I don't like domestic thrillers. So I didn't. Anyway, moving on. So I'm about halfway with Mooncakes and it's okay. Like, I'm loving the representation, but the story is pretty thin. So there's basically, so she's a witch, they are a werewolf, and there's like a demon horse in the forest that they have to take care of. I don't know why, don't know where it came from, don't know what it's doing there, but they're gonna, they're just gonna take care of it. And her, she lives with her two grandmas who I assume are married to each other. I, that it's not just like one grandma from each side who happened to live together and are raising their granddaughter. I'm assuming they're married to each other, which is really cool. Um, she wears hearing aids. Uh, they you go by they, them pronouns. They are together or they, I mean, are they get together. Um, so I'm loving the representation. <sighs> Otherwise, it's just, if I were... If I, I mean this and this is I mean it's made for a younger audience if I was a younger audience I would love this it's okay I'm still gonna finish it though I am still gonna finish it it's quick to read it's I like how it's illustrated I'm hoping there's more to the story but we'll see um, at this point it's kind of on track for a two star which means it was okay um, and then update on Lavender House. So actually, correction first on Lavender House. So I had described this as like Lavender House is kind of like a boarding house where, you know, I guess a group of friends like all live there or some strangers somehow found together. They're all queer. No, that's not really what it is. That's not what it is at, at all, really. Uh, Lavender House is a mansion and it's basically, so it's, so there's the two women who own the house. One of them learn, runs the family business of a very large and successful soap company. She is the one who dies. Other people in the house include their son, who is also gay, his boyfriend, and then to keep up appearances, the son is also married to a woman, and her wife or her girlfriend also lives in the house, as well as the wife's mother, who is not gay, but is cool with everything. And then the three members of the household staff are also gay. So it's a very safe place for them to be at home, but they are, it's a, it's family members basically. And the people who work there, which makes it really awkward because, so the wife is questioning who, like what happened to the woman, her wife who passed away, but it's like, well, if she was murdered, she was likely murdered by someone who lives in the house, which are people mostly that you are related to. So they might get messy because like, why would they, if that was the case, but if it was the case that it's like some outside person, like how did that happen? Like this is a secluded, like manor estate, like who, who and how? So, but he has um, arrived at the house now, has started to look around, started to talk to people, and we'll see where it goes. But I am really enjoying this one. I'm So far, I mean, I liked Dead in Gondola. I'm also liking this one as well. I know, ugh, that reflection. I'll work on it. But, so Lavender House. I'm not that far into it, just on page 40, but it's good. It's good. It is June 9th, and I have another update for you. So I finished Mooncakes. And as predicted, it was two stars. Like I had said before, love the representation, but the story was just not there for me. So two stars, for me, that means it was okay. And then I'm now about 80% into Lavender House. And I have yet another correction on this one. So I had mentioned 
early on in the book that the son's wife's mother lives at the house and that she is the only one at the house who is not gay, but she's kind of just cool with everything. She's not. She's not. I said that before we actually met the character. Um, yeah, she, she puts up with things, but she has opinions that are not great. So normally she keeps them to herself, but it is... So, uh, yeah, trigger warning for homophobia. Um, also, I didn't mention trigger warning for suicidal ideation. Um, the main character, um, when he is first fired from the police department, is kind of planning on offing himself and then gets hired for this PI job, basically. And it's like, oh, well, <laughs> I'll try this. But he kind of goes back and forth on it for a while until... a maybe like halfway through the book he decides he wants to live so trigger warning that is a part of this book i i don't even really have a guess of the whodunit i i don't know like it could be anyone i don't want it to be any of them though so i i i'm curious how this is gonna end i've got let's see how many pages left uh, less than 70 pages left so I'm curious how this wraps, wraps up and I have started my lady's choosing this is the choose your own adventure historical romance and so I can't and I can't really say like oh how far I am into it because that just you fl you go back and forth the whole book when I started it, so it's it's written as like, you do this, and then you see this handsome man from across the room, and then he, he speaks to you, and it's like it's all it's written. I don't, I forget what that tense is called, but it's you it, you like you are the character, um, which I didn't. It it kind of was a little off putting at first. Um, I'm getting more used to it now, so I'm not minding it as much. But if that's something you know you don't like, you will not like this. But if it's something you do like and you enjoy historical romance, I do recommend this. It's, I, what I'm also really enjoying about this one is that it's because each, like each, each section, each option is like max three pages long. It's constantly, like there are constantly twists and turns. Things are constantly changing, which again, if you don't like that, you won't like this. But if you do like a constantly evolving, changing story, I highly, I highly recommend it. So I'm enjoying it. I wouldn't say loving, but I am enjoying it. It is June 13th and I have finished two books and started three more. So let me update you. So first I finished Lavender House. That was three stars. I was between three and four but I decided it wasn't quite a four, but I gave it three. And I really liked how the author handled the, like the reveal of the whodunit and like how that was, I thought it was really well done because I, I went into the end of that book having no clue and I was satisfied with the ending. And I also feel like it did a good job setting up book two, which comes out this fall and I'm really looking forward to reading. So I, Three stars for Lavender House. And then, shortly after that, I finished My Lady's Choosing, the Choose Your Own Adventure historical romance. I also gave that three stars. This one, I was between two and three, but I felt like I enjoyed the novelty of a Choose Your Own Adventure historical romance so much that it was three stars. Um, and at, so at the beginning of that book, it gives you a sort of like like a character list. So it like tells you who your best friend is. It tells you like, you, you get like a description of like three roguish gentlemen that you can basically choose between. The person I ended up with the, at the end of the book was not one of those three. Um, like not even, was not on the list. So I also feel like it sort of ended abruptly. And so I'm not sure if, like, I mean, everyone who reads this is gonna read a slightly different book, probably. Um, so I don't know if they all have a, if 
they each have like an abrupt feeling ending. This mine had an abrupt feeling ending, but I I still enjoyed it. So three stars. And then, so since I finished the audiobook of The Soulmate, my next audiobook is, let's see if I can get this right. Um, the United States of Cryptids, A Tale of American Myths and Monsters. I think I got that right. Um, I mean, it's basically exactly what it sounds like. Although I went, so since I'm reading the audiobook, I do wish I had a physical copy or even the ebook because it is fully illustrated. And if you're going to read a book about cryptids, you want it to be fully illustrated. But the audiobook is still good, so I'm enjoying that one. And then I started, I started Marple, the, I, it was either a gift last Christmas or the Christmas before. Um, it, the, it's 12 new Marple short stories, and I've only read the first one so far. I, to be honest, am not a short story person. But this was a gift and I love Agatha Christie, so I do want to read it. The first one, I felt like I liked the story, but near the end, I feel like Miss Marple is a, she does something that I don't think Miss Marple would do. So, I mean, I'm sure there's hits and misses in most short story collections from what I gather. I don't read them usually, but, um, so I wouldn't say it was a miss. I just, I was like, no way. And then the other one that I started is called A Dreadful Splendor. I think that's what it's called. <laughs> I'm about 85 pages in. This one has got a good setup and I'm enjoying it so far. So this one is set in England in the 1850s and the main character is a spiritualist. She's basically what we would call a medium. She does seances for people, although she's she's a fake she's faking everything um and she is hired by a guy who thinks that she can do this hired by a guy who is like he's a lawyer and he's a family friend of this guy who um his fiance died and has for the past several months has just been grieving and can't really move past it so he hires her the friend hires her to perform a seance for his friend to kind of help him move on from his fiance's death. So she travels with him to this guy's estate because he is a very wealthy gentleman. So she travels to his estate and when she meets with him, with the guy, um, they, they're, they're speaking in private because he's like, okay, so here's the deal. I don't believe in seances, but what I want you to do is to perform a fake seance because, th because, so the story is that she killed herself the night before the wedding. He does not believe that. He believes that she was murdered. So he wants her to perform a fake seance to basically like induce, like scare someone into a confession of like who killed his fiance. And she's like, okay. <laughs> So, and then I think I remember from the summary, so I could be wrong, but I think I remember that it then also becomes a question of like, because she's setting up this fake seance and it becomes a question of like, wait, is this house actually haunted? Like, is there really a spirit here? So I, I'm only like 85 pages in. So we're like, she's, they, she's just talked to him. Like they're kind of setting up, like they're planning, like, okay, we'll do it a week from now. He, he tells her like, you know, get a feel for, you know, like pick out what room in the house you think would be best to do it in, talk to everyone, see if you can kind of figure out who did it. And she's like, oh, okay. <laughs> um, so, I mean, there, there are various reasons why she kind of has to say yes to this, but that's, that's details. So, uh, I, it's a good setup. I'm enjoying it so far and I'm eager to see where this goes. So I'm intrigued. Good morning. It is June 17th. I bought some new plants this morning. I got citronella and bluegrass. And so while I plant those, I'll update you on my reading for the past couple days. 
So I finished the cryptid book. I liked it, gave it three stars. Again, there's not really much to say about that one. Um, it is what it sounds like. And then I'm maybe now like a quarter of the way, a little more than that, into um, Dreadful Splendor. And I was right, there are hints of, is this house really haunted? And I am enjoying that, because there are some kind of creepy moments, and they honestly could go either way. We have not gotten to the seance yet, but again, I'm only like 25 to 30 percent in. A little more. I have been trying to find a new audiobook, and I've tried out two of them. But one I just couldn't get into, and the other one I didn't like the narrator's voice. So still on the hunt for that one. I am also still making my way through the Miss Marple short stories. And the one I'm on now, it seems like a, a longer one, and I'm not really enjoying this one. Um, I, it's the third or fourth one in the book. Um, I do still want to read it because it's. It, I do love Agatha Christie and Miss Marple, and it's an interesting new way for me of enjoying those stories. I know that Agatha Christie did write um, several short stories, which I probably include Marple. I don't include Perot, so. Um, but as I said, I have not read those because I generally am not a short story reader. So we'll see how the rest of the book, how I feel about that. So we have citronella and bluegrass. Oh, they look so good. I am so excited. It is June 21st, happy summer solstice. I've got about 60 or 70 pages left of a dread, I always forget the word, a dreadful splendor. The seance is about to begin. I'm very excited. It is June 30th, the end of the month, and I have finished three more books. I was hoping to have filmed a little bit more at the end of the month, this last week or so, but ugh, really, really poor air quality here in the Midwest this week, um, including for one day, worst in the world. Not great, not great, I'll tell you. I have never in my 37 years ever experienced so much smoke. And I'll tell you, I didn't like it. I don't know how people live with this regularly, seasonally. I, we, it's been like this for four days and I'm done with it. So yeah, and usually I like to read outside on my balcony. So that did not happen at all. I was out very minimally the past few days. So yeah, moving on from that. Let's finish our wrap up for the month. So first book I have to tell you about is A Dreadful Splendor by B.R. Myers. This one, I was between three and four stars. I ended up going with three because unfortunately, so you have the seance and then boy, does it go off the rails. <laughs> um, cause like for most of the book, I was like, what? Like stuff would happen all the time. I was like, this is what? And then it became what? what? And so it just, it didn't ruin the book. I still liked it. So I gave it three stars, but it just didn't, it was, it didn't work for me. The ending didn't work for me. Like I said, I still did enjoy it overall, three stars, but it kind of, it was going, it was crawling up there. It was crawling up to a four star and it didn't quite make it. The next one was Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village by Maureen Johnson and illustrated by Jay Cooper. I read this as an ebook and it was cute. It was a fun read. I liked the illustrations. Murder mystery is my favorite genre, specifically golden age mysteries. So, and this book is not just golden age mysteries. Like it'll cover a lot of, a lot of mysteries set in a quaint English village. Um, it sort of goes over all of the 
the tropes, the usual characters, the usual places, the types of events that happen at the manor house, the types of, you know, people you're going to run into, situations you're going to find the main character in. And so it was enjoyable. It was fun. It would make a great gift for someone who enjoys mysteries. I wish, though, that I could read a version of this that like really dived into each of those things and like just talked more about them because this is really just like it says what it is it gives like a short explanation and then it's just kind of on to the next and it's like it is what it is like it's just a short quick cute guide to this but I would also like to read something that just has more to it so I think I found a book like that I'll put the one I'm thinking up right here. So I'm going to I'm going to check that one out, but so it was good. I gave it 3 stars. I did enjoy it. And then my last book for the month was an audiobook. It was Lighter by Young Pueblo. This is kind of a, basically a self-help book. Um I'm always wary of self-help books because like they'll often lean on like to toxic positivity. They often ignore structural inequalities, and this one doesn't. So I was like, okay. <laughs> um, it, it even like calls out both of those things. Um, as in like, you know, you can't be positive all the time. That's actually not a healthy way to be. You have to really face, you know, your experiences, what you're feeling. And um, it does address structural inequalities and being an activist and fighting for things outside of, you know, what's going on for you personally. And I did appreciate that because that's not the case for all self-help books. Um, there's, it's based in Buddhist philosophies. So if you're familiar at all with Buddhism, a lot of the concepts talked about in this book are going to be familiar to you. I, I don't know if I'd say this is a book about Buddhism but you could make that case. So if you are interested in Buddhism, um, like if you want like a first look at it, I think this is not a bad place to start for that. Okay, so I finished counting them up and I read nine books this month. Five were physical books, three were audiobooks, and one was ebooks. I am really, really, really enjoying getting back into reading physical books. As I may have said before, I've been reading like almost exclusively audiobooks for at least a year. So getting back into reading physical books, I've really enjoyed. I Like I said, I read mostly outside on the balcony. Didn't do that at all the past few days, but hopefully we should be back to normal within another two days, fingers crossed. So I'll be back out there. But to go over the books I read, the nine books I read this month. So Dead in Gondola, three stars. The Soulmate, one star. Mooncakes, two stars. And thinking about it now, I'm not sure why it was called Mooncakes. Unless I'm forgetting something. I don't know. Lavender House was three stars. My Lady's Choosing, three stars. The United States of Cryptids, three stars. Dreadful Splendor, three stars. Your Guide to Not Getting Murdered in a Quaint English Village, three stars. And Lighter, three stars. This was honestly also a very good reading month for me like there's no four or five stars but I those are pretty rare for me like five a five star book that happens maybe once or twice a year like I'm I'm very I hardly ever give a book five stars and four stars I had there were two of them that I was between three and four I went for three so overall there and I only there was one one star and one two star all the rest for three. For me, that's good. For how I do my star ratings, that's good. <laughs> so that is my June reading vlog. I think it went really well. Um, I want to try and do, I always start out, well, always, based on the reading vlog from April and now June. I start out really strong, like recording pretty regularly. And then the, you know, second half of the month is like, I'll check in once in a while, <laughs> like I've done for the end of this one. So I'm hoping, so I'm going to try, I'm going to plan on doing this again 
in August, so taking July off of the reading vlog, coming back in August. I'm thinking that schedule so far is working for me. So I will see you again in August, probably. If not, I just didn't do it. <laughs> and I hope that you enjoy your summer reading.